This is a new video software that I'm trying out. It, it seems to have a picture of me in the in the image, and I hope that works out all all right. Anyway, I'm going to show you the most beautiful case that uh, Antonina very kindly has shared with me. Now, I don't have any clinical information, but I, I think we can actually work out for ourselves a lot about this case just from looking at the histology. So if we, if we look at it just at scanning magnification, the most obvious thing are all the hair follicles uh, deep in the subcutaneous fat. And so the most likely site of this biopsy is going to be the scalp, which indeed uh, I'm certain this is where this comes from. Now, I just want to go back um, to the other, uh, the other piece of tissue because it's actually, um, it's actually a better one to look at this tumor. Now, what you can see very easily at low power are basaloid nests in, in the dermis. Um, with some, some apparent involvement of the lobelang epidermis. So let's look at this at a little bit higher and see what we've got. So there is, there is the normal skin, there's the scalp hairs, and then we come across and there's our basaloid cell population. So at this magnification, um, I guess really that the, 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 there only are two differential diagnoses that are worth thinking about. One is going to be trichoblastoma and the other is going to be basal cell carcinoma. So let's have a look at higher magnification and see if we can decide which it is. Well, I'll just have to turn this blessed slide round. I can't can't handle, handle it when it's all at a funny angle. Now, if we look here, there's the epidermis. You, you can see an origin of the tumor uh, with basaloid nests and keratocysts. So that bit there looks awfully like a, a trichoepithelioma. So that would be another differential. I, I tend to distinguish between trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma particularly because trichoblastoma is non-syndromic, so it's not, uh, it doesn't really matter very much to the patient. It's just a, a nodule which usually presents on the scalp. It's slowly growing. It can get quite big, and um, uh, that's about all there is, there is to it. Very exceptionally, Trichoblastoma is malignant, but those are really as rare as hen's teeth. Now, if we look deeper down in the dermis, you can see basaloid nodules, and you can see there's a lot of stroma. Now, I just want to take you to the side so that you see the dermis. This is the dermal connective tissue. So if you get that in your mind's eye and then start looking at the lesion, and you can see that the stroma is quite different. That there's a nice view there. Normal dermal stroma. Here's the tumor stroma. Now this is not. Um, these are not fibroblasts. This this these this represents follicular stroma. And we we'll look at that at high power again. So. Um, what we're seeing is a tumor composed really of two components, the epithelial component and the stromal component. And that makes a diagnosis of trichoblastoma extremely easy. Now, uh, sometimes in trichoblastoma, and not in this case really, it's not very well developed, but you do see condensations of stroma and I think, I think, um, let me see, that there's a field there where you can see, you see the way it's, uh, the nuclei are compressed and it's a little bit mixoidy. 
And that's going in the direction of the follicular mesenchymal body that, that we see in trichoblastoma. And it's a very useful clue, but its absence does not mean you can't make a diagnosis of trichoblastoma. To my mind, it's the combination of the stroma and the epithelium. Now, uh, other features that you may see in trichoblastoma, they can be quite mitotically active. I mean, that there is a mitosis there, but sometimes there are lots of them, and that can be a bit alarming. But if you know that trichoblastoma mitosis, rather like pilomatrixoma does too, there's another mitosis, and there's another mitosis. So they're there, but they're not very brisk. But anyway, um, now I just want to look at a lower power again. What the other feature that you'll notice is sometimes these basaloid nests, they are separated from the adjacent uh, connective tissue. They crack away. It's called a cracking off artifact. And one does not see mucin in the space between the epithelium and the connective tissue as you would expect to see in a basal cell carcinoma. This one has other interesting features because um, we'll look a bit higher part at the top here and you can see there's some sebaceous differentiation going on in the lesion which is not uncommon when we think that the um, trichoblastoma can differentiate in any way it likes so sebaceous differentiation is not a not an issue now how do we tell trichoblastoma from basal cell carcinoma if we're really stuck well if i really can't tell it's a trichoblastoma on h and e then i suppose one does have to resort to immunohistochemistry one of the differences between nodular BCC and trichoblastoma is that trichoblastoma often has Merkel cells within the tumor nodules, and you can identify those with CK20. Um, other things you can do, key 67 is generally much more positive in a BCC than it is in a, a trichoblastoma. And similarly, p53 may be overexpressed in a BCC, but it really shouldn't be overexpressed in a trichoblastoma. Now, CD10 can sometimes be useful because it it, uh, it is present in a peritumoral distribution. And um, BCL2 tends to show peripheral staining in trichoblastoma, whereas it's diffuse in a basal cell carcinoma. But I have to be honest with you, I, uh, I, I've never been one to spend too much time on immunohistochemistry on such tumors because really, once you've identified the follicular stroma, well, then you're home and dry. And um, people tend to do immuno, and I understand why. It certainly helps hold your hand if you're a bit uncertain. But really, these things should be recognized at, first, at one glance. There's another little interesting field where you're seeing uh, melanin deposition. De uh, which is not a surprise uh, as one sees melanin in the hair germ, not uncommonly. And I, there was a third bit, so I just wanted to make sure we're not missing anything important. Here's the third bit here. And uh, no, it's just an edge. So I hope that's been of some interest to you. It's a beautiful example of a very typical trichoblastoma. So thank you very much for your attention.